So today I'm going to go through an idea that uh, I've had for a, for a little while now. After I built the Spanish Cedar Adirondack chairs, I created a, a template. I drew it on this board and then photographed it. I printed it out on this, some letter here and it occurred to me that this is a nice size. Wouldn't it be fun to make a miniature one using all of the scrap wood that I got left? It's a beautiful wood. It's very fine grain, so I'm thinking that I can actually make a, a miniature Adirondack chair and I'm just going to do it using the spare wood that I had from from the, the you know the full size versions and uh, I'm, so I'm going to use this drawing to do that. So this should be fun. I'm going to make a, make a miniature Adirondack chair, sort of a G.I. Joe sized Adirondack chair. Actually it'd be a bit big for G.I. Joe but nevertheless it's going to be a lot of fun to do that so I'm just going to use the simplest of tools and I get a nice sharp pencil some uh, some some vernier calipers there and uh, set up the set up the saw and start cutting some planks to the right scale thickness and I can get those off the drawing and uh, make it make a miniature chair with it so stick around if you want to see how I did it So this, I'm going to use this drawing as I mentioned, and I'm going to use these calipers. These are these are tenths of an inch I can get on this thing, so it's kind of handy. The squares on this are one inch, and this is scaled down to those being about 0.2 of an inch there. All right, so two tenths of an inch. So that's kind of neat. That's an, that's convenient. Now the first, the, there's a couple of places I can determine the thickness of my five quarter, which would be a, which is actually going to be a, and end up in about two. If I roll this out, it's about two point. Hmm, I think two point two inch uh, tenths of an inch. So, so that should do it. So I'm going to set the bandsaw to cut that and I'm going to mark this piece of wood here. It's got sufficient width to do the handles, probably the legs and the struts as well. So I'm going to cut this, this piece of Spanish cedar uh, depth wise now on the bandsaw to create some boards that will be a scale of the five quarter timber I used to make the real chairs. Okay, so let's go to the bandsaw. So this is cool, I can do my takeoffs directly from the drawing onto the tools like this. So that's the thickness I need for my boards for the arms of the of the Adirondack chair. That's set, that's the 2.2 2 ten, tenths of an inch. So having got the sizes, the scale thicknesses for the boards all figured out, it was really just a case of getting on the bandsaw and doing all my cuts with all of the off cuts that I had from the full sized Adirondack project. Next I just did my takeoffs from the drawings onto the boards I'd cut to get all the shapes made that I needed to actually make the Adirondack chairs and of course thanks to the photographic nature of the image that I was working from. These were perfectly to scale uh, based on the original Adirondack chairs. Having got all the parts cut, it was time to start assembling this and I'm using a, a micro nailer there that I, that I picked up a few years back and it's been brilliant. It can fire minute nails down to this, about three eighths in length uh, is what I'm using there. And so I'm using that to help me help me with the construction. So a, con a combination of that little gun and glue and then I start to put it together. And interestingly, in the same order, more or less, that I was having to do for the larger ones, 
uh, to make sure that I wasn't getting in my own way with things like leaving the arms off until last because otherwise you can't easily staple all of the seat slats on. In fact, I didn't even put the front legs on at first. I got all the slats done first. Uh, but before then, I had to do the back slats because the seat slats get in the way of nailing the back slats. So, you know, it's just a case of figuring out the best process for putting it all together. And so there it is, fully assembled. I'll just leave that overnight for the glue to dry. And the next day, I gave it a coat of tongue oil, which really brought the color up and gave it a slightly glossy look. A really nice finish for the little chair. Please click the like button if you found this episode helpful and we'd love to have you as a subscriber as there's always something interesting going on in the Smoogleville workshop. You getting the beers in or what? Mm -hmm.